Hi everyone, welcome to Duality Repair. If you've watched this channel for any amount of time, you'll know that I haven't really dabbled in RF up to this point, but I need to familiarize myself with RF soon because I plan on doing some tuner alignments in the near future, and it's just good to have that background knowledge when dealing with electronic repair. The previous owner had this with the intention of refurbishing it, but he just got too busy. There were too many projects on his bench, so he decided to sell it. And so I'm hopeful everything inside is original, but obviously we'll see when we get to that point. With me being so inexperienced with RF, you'll get to watch me struggle through this. But through the struggle, I will develop and grow and learn, and so I'm really looking forward to it. I did mess around with this just a little bit with my scope, and there are some very obvious issues. Uh, let's take a look at those before we open it up. Problem number one is pretty obvious. We have some very nasty distortion on the output here. Problem number two, when I gently toggle the range switch, kind of toggle it in and out, twist it just a little bit, you can see we kind of lose the signal. We actually almost get a decent sine wave depending on how I, there it is, depending on how I have it. And now I lost the signal completely for a while there. Yeah, very touchy. <laughs> Look at that. So some definite problems to deal with. Let's get it open. Okay, let the RF ignorance begin. Here's the inside of the signal generator with all of the covers removed. And this looks really, really clean. I don't see any signs that anyone's been in here and done anything electrically anyway. You can see some labels here to designate what each adjustment potentiometer does. But that's just on the outside. That doesn't mean that anyone's actually been in here and done any electrical work. Being so new to RF, I'm most likely going to miss some things that I should be checking and should be replacing, but I know that the work that I will be doing will improve the unit. So what do I plan on doing? Number one, I did count eight electrolytic capacitors, and I will replace all eight of those. They're all the same brand, Illinois, and they all appear to be of the same vintage, so I assume they're original, and even if they're not, I'm going to replace them anyway with some pretty high-quality caps. Number two, I am going to clean to the best of my ability all of the potentiometers and selection switches that are in this unit. We saw the marginality in the range switch specifically. That's this switch here. And it's very obvious there's some deep scoring um, or buildup or both on that dial there. And so I'm sure that's contributing to the marginality. And I'm sure other switches and potentiometers are showing the same types of issues in this unit. And so giving all of these a really good cleaning should help with that. Number three, although I'd love to keep this unit as original as possible, especially externally, I have no use for this older style RF connector. And so I'm going to replace it with a newer style BNC connector. And number four, I'm not a big fan of having to desolder the mains power lines anytime I want to work on the generator. And so I plan on putting a terminal block in the chassis itself. One side of the block will be mounted to the incoming mains and the other side will be mounted to the signal generator itself. That way, when I want to pull the generator out, I just need to disconnect three wires. Let's start with the terminal block. The new BNC connector is attached. No problems. Thank you. 
All right, we're back. And as you can see, we have a much cleaner looking output. That distortion that we saw earlier is gone. And if I toggle the range selection switch back and forth as I did before, no more noise. I can toggle between different ranges. Very clean, smooth transitions. So I think this part of the unit is healthy now. However, there are still some problems. So with the gross attenuator switches in the out position, meaning there's no attenuation there, if I reduce the fine attenuator all the way down to its minimum, you can see we still have a pretty significant signal. This is 100 millivolts per division. So this is something like 200 millivolts peak to peak uh, with the fine attenuator down at its minimum. Now looking at modulation, if I increase the modulation level, we can clearly see on the scope there is some modulation occurring. It's not the prettiest, I don't have this set up. But if we look at the modulation meter itself, it's barely moving. The max I can hit is 10%, so that's not correct. So although the signal generator is running fairly well, I think I can get it to perform a little bit better by going through the alignment or as much of it as I can. So performing an alignment on something like this requires quite a bit of test equipment, and I don't have a lot of it. So I have, of course, multimeters. I have an oscilloscope, but even my scope is not going to cut it. It's only good for 15 megahertz, and so I actually had to order a new scope, or new to me, and that should go up to, I believe, 200 megahertz, so that should work. I don't have a spectrum analyzer. I don't have a frequency counter, and so I'm going to do as much of the alignment as I can with the equipment that I do have to the best of my ability. All right, here's my new scope. It's a Tektronix TDS-350. It does go up to 200 megahertz, so it should be able to handle applications like this. I still prefer my analog B&K 1477 scope over something like this, though. And so I'll probably use that in most cases, and I'll only break this out when I need to. I'm not going to say much more about this scope. I don't have any information on any service history. I'm sure I'll open it up in the future and make a video or two about it. For the alignment of the signal generator, the service manual is available online and that contains the alignment procedure. However, I found a very informative website dedicated to the B&K E200D, and there's a ton of information on here. They have the original service manual, they have a service bulletin, they have some information on modifying the signal generator, they have disassembly instructions, owner's manual, a bunch of things, the schematic, of course, but what I'm gonna be using here is their alignment procedure. So I went through this specific alignment procedure and I went through the original from B&K and I, I prefer this alignment procedure. It's easier to read, seems easier to follow, especially for someone new to RF like me. So this is the procedure I'm going to attempt to follow. The first step is frequency adjustment. So it looks like you go through each band, taking measurements at the low end and high end, and then making adjustments as necessary to each band's variable capacitor and variable inductor. Ideally, I'd be using a frequency counter for this so that I have the accuracy and resolution necessary. However, as I said, I don't have one. So I'm just gonna be relying on the frequency measurement from my scope. And because I don't have the accuracy and resolution necessary, this, this just isn't gonna cut it. I'm probably not gonna be making any adjustments. This is just gonna be a rough check of each band at the low end and high end. Let's start with band A, which goes from 100 kilohertz to 370 kilohertz. I have the dial set for 100 kilohertz right now, and you can see we have a pretty nice looking waveform on the scope, and we're measuring right around 100 kilohertz. Pretty good start. All right, we're at the upper end of the A band, which should be 370 kilohertz. Again, waveform looks nice. The scope is measuring right around 370 kilohertz. Let's go to band B. Band B goes from 370 kilohertz to 1.4 megahertz. We're at the low end of the band right now. Again, waveform looks clean. We're measuring right around 370 kilohertz. Let's go to the upper end. We're set to 1.4 megahertz on the dial. Waveform looks nice, and we're reading very close to 1.4 megahertz. Let's go to band C. Band C goes from 1.4 to 5.1 megahertz. We're at the low end of the band right now. Waveform looks nice reading very close to 1.4 megahertz. Let's go to the upper end. We're at the upper end now, 5.1 megahertz on the dial. Waveform looks nice, reading again very close to 5.1 megahertz. Let's go to band D. Band D goes from 5 megahertz to 16 megahertz. We're at the low end of the band. Clean waveform, very close to 5 megahertz reading on the scope. Let's go to the upper end. 
We're at the upper end of band D, which should be 16 megahertz. You can see we're reading very close to 16 megahertz on the scope, but we're starting to see some distortion now, right around the midline. So that's a little concerning. This is probably not the area of the signal generator that I'm going to be using most, so I'm going to move on for now. Band E goes from 15 megahertz to 54 megahertz, so we're at the low end of the band. You can see we're reading very close to 15 megahertz. Again, we have that distortion right around the midline. Let's go to the upper end of the band. The upper end of the E band looks okay. We're set for 54 megahertz on the dial. The waveform looks pretty clean, and we're reading close to 54 megahertz on the scope. However, there do seem to be some issues in the middle of the range, so let's take a look at that. So we already have a bit of distortion here at the low end of the E-band, but watch what happens as I increase the frequency. Some very strange behavior. This is where my ignorance is going to come into play here. You can see towards the top of the band we start smoothing out, and as we saw at the very top it's, it seems to be very nice. However, in the middle of the band it's very ugly. Now it still appears to be reading the fundamental fairly well. This is set for 25 megahertz on the dial. We're reading very close to 25 megahertz, so we can read that, which is fine. However, I'm not a fan of the distortion. I'm not going to be using the signal generator down here, so I'm not going to address this at this time. I really want to get this thing buttoned up as soon as I can so I can start using it, but I would love your feedback. All the RF gurus out there probably know exactly what this is or exactly where to look at least. What should I be looking for to address this issue at the low end of the E-band all the way up to kind of the mid end of the E-band? What's going on here? Let me know. The next step is for audio oscillator adjustment or the modulation. There is a potentiometer on the back of the generator for this R42, but as far as I can tell this isn't for adjusting the actual modulation frequency. It's just to ensure that the signal is stable. So let's take a look at the modulation. As I increase, you can see our modulation meter. Again, as I said earlier, not working. Doesn't seem to be working properly, but we do have a very clean looking sine wave. The frequency that the scope is measuring isn't quite what I'm expecting. Should be 400 hertz. It's measuring right around 460. Not sure how accurate that is. Not sure how important that is that it's actually at 400 hertz, but certainly we do have modulation. It's very clean looking. So I'm gonna move on. Up next is the modulation meter adjustment. So hopefully we can get this meter dialed in now. I have everything set up. I have a 500 kilohertz output. The modulation level potentiometer is set to mid-range. The modulation switch is set to internal. And I have it connected to my BNK 1477 scope. You can see we don't have any modulation really present here. And so there's definitely going to need to be an adjustment made. The goal of this is to adjust the potentiometer on the back of the generator, R54, in conjunction with the mod level potentiometer and my volts per division switch on my scope to achieve the desired waveform. So let's see if we can get this done. I think I'll have to go back inside the RF generator. There does seem to be a problem with the modulation circuitry. If we look at the scope, channel A here is monitoring the RF output, the 500 kilohertz signal. Channel two is monitoring the actual modulation level as taken from the center tap of the modulation level potentiometer here. So watch as I increase the modulation level can see we do get modulation from both the center tap of the potentiometer as well as from the carrier signal. And as I continue to increase, the modulation level increases as well. I'm pretty much at the center of travel here on the potentiometer. Our modulation meter is only reading about 10%, so that doesn't seem right. And as I continue to increase, by the time I get to not even two-thirds of the travel, we lose our signal completely. I think I figured out the modulation issue. It wasn't a big deal. I went back to the audio oscillator adjustment procedure, which calls for adjusting the potentiometer R42 to ensure that that 400 hertz sine wave output is as clean and stable as possible. We saw earlier that the output was very clean. However, it was significantly lower than what it should be. And so I touched up R42 just a bit, increased that output significantly, and let's take a look at the results. As I increase the modulation level, you can see we have significant modulation now on the scope and the meter itself seems to be reading back appropriately now. 
I'll go all the way to the spec, which is 50% modulation, which is around there. And this is exactly what we're looking for. Peaks at about six divisions, troughs at about two divisions. So after adjusting R42, it was just a matter of following the rest of the procedure, which includes adjusting R54, the mod level, and the fine attenuator until the desired waveform is achieved. So I think this looks great, let's move on. On second thought, I think the rest of the alignment is gonna to have to wait. I just don't have the proper equipment to get this done correctly. I'm pretty happy with what I do have. This is a fairly decently functioning signal generator. It's got a few problems, but nothing that's going to prevent me from doing what I need to do with it. I cleaned it up as best I could, and it's now in its final resting place next to its brother, the B&K 1477 scope. So I'm glad I got to go through this experience. I learned quite a bit. I feel slightly less dumb when it comes to RF, but I still have a long way to go, I'm sure. So thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.